Perfect? Bang on my chest if you think I'm perfect. Go ahead, bang on it. No heart? You gotta have heart. Miles and miles of heart. This is Patchwork Heart Ministries Young Catholics Respond, brought to you by Breadbox Media. Now, here's your host, Bill Snyder. Thanks, Adam, and welcome to the program, everybody. I am Bill Snyder. This is Young Catholics Respond, and uh, thank you so much for joining us and being a part of our ministry. We're so excited that you've tuned in today, no matter how you're listening, whether you're listening out there in West Virginia, in the mountains of West Virginia. I hear it's almost heaven out there. And you can also uh, find us on Breadbox Media. So if you found us there, uh, please share it with a friend. Uh, We love when you share our ministry and our program with a friend. And on on today's program, we're continuing our conversation from last week uh, with Martha Fernandez Sardina. She is a bilingual international new evangelization speaker, trainer, radio and TV host, writer, outreach developer and consultant. She's also served as a two-time Archdiocesan Director for Evangelization and is the founders and president of RememberYourLove.com, and her website is MarthaFernandezSardina.com. So, Martha, welcome to the program. It's always great to have you, and thanks for being on uh, two consecutive weeks here. Thank you. It's always great to be back. I'd be on your show every week if uh, we needed it. (laughs) Awesome. Uh, Well, you know, it really truly is uh, such an action-packed time in the church. Uh, We just finished up Holy Week, and if you were listening to last week's program, or if you didn't get a chance to listen to last week's program, go find it back on uh, the podcast feeds and listen to it. Um, But, yeah, we were talking all about Holy Week last week, and Uh, Now it really uh, changes gear. We're, you know, we're celebrating Christ's resurrection and also his divine mercy uh, because it is, uh, we're approaching Divine Mercy Sunday. And I want to talk about the connection between um, the the events of Easter and and last week to the uh, connection this week, which is Divine Mercy and that focus. So let's talk a little bit about that. Yes, as you mentioned, we're already uh, underway, the Novena, the Divine Mercy Novena is underway in preparation for the second Sunday of Easter, or Divine Mercy Sunday, which is a feast that St. John Paul II instituted um, at the bequest of our Lord Jesus Christ to St. Faustina. But let's go back a bit, and then we'll go forward. Why? Why mercy? Why celebrate this? What's the big deal? Well, the question I think that we could ask ourselves is, Why did God create all the things he created? And the epitome of his creation is the human person. Male and female, he created them. In his own image and likeness did he create us. Why did God create us, Bill? Because God is love. God is a communion of persons. The Father loves the Son, and the Son loves the Father, and that love between the Father and the Son is uh, the Holy Spirit. That has been poured in, or who, I should say, the Holy Spirit, a person, the third person of the Blessed Trinity, as we say in the Creed, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. That Holy Spirit, that love of God has been poured into our hearts, St. Paul says in Romans, has been poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. So why do we celebrate divine mercy, and what's the connection with the Paschal Mystery that we've just celebrated uh, with the Easter Triduum? Holy Thursday through uh, uh, Easter, on Easter Vigil and Easter Sunday. What's the connection? That God so, 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 my scriptures say, at least in my head, so loved the world, John 3, 16. That God so loved the world, you and me and every human being, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him may not perish, but have everlasting life. So we see that Jesus is given to us by the Father, at the crib, in the cup, and on the cross. We celebrate it, right, Bill? When he comes to us in the crib at Christmas, God is given to us as a human being, uh, divine and human. He gives himself to us in the cup, in the chalice, in the covenant, his body and blood, soul and divinity, which we celebrated, the institution of which, I should say, we celebrated on Holy Thursday. He gave himself to us and for us, on the cross, which we celebrated or commemorated on Good Friday, and he opened wide for us the fount of mercy, which is actually part of the prayers that we say, right, in the chaplet of divine mercy, that his side was pierced and blood and water flowed, 
and with it, it's a symbol of the sacraments of the church, the mercy of God being poured out onto the world. Why again? Why? Because God created us to live in that communion of love that God is, so that we might live with him here on earth, enjoying a knowledge of God, knowing God, loving God, serving God, and live with him for all eternity. So why divine mercy, Bill? Because God is love, and mercy is his second name, said St. John Paul II. Beautiful. Um, it really is beautiful uh, how you how you mentioned that, um, you know, love and mercy. And uh, the one thing I want to ask you a little bit about is, you know, we talk about divine mercy, you talk about the chaplet um, in there just a little bit. And um, how about the origins of of divine mercy where did where did it flow from where did it come from um and 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 why is it to me why is it such a great thing uh for for the church today yes well mercy begins with god mercy actually is an attribute of god uh he is rich in mercy saint paul tells us uh, again in the letter to the romans and in fact that is the title of a, an encyclical letter that John Paul II, St. John Paul II, wrote in 1980, uh, Divis in Misericordia, Divis in Misericordia, God is rich in mercy. By the way, let me mention here just a little chronology. Uh, Pope Francis uh, is, speaks a lot about mercy. He instituted the Year of Mercy uh, at the end of 2015 um, through 2016. Uh, he wrote in preparation for that in 2014 uh, the letter Miserando al Fue Eligendo, um, and having mercyed me, he called me, um, or something to that effect, having looked at me with mercy, it's a reference to uh, the call of Levi, or Matthew, which is, by the way, quite significant, he says, in his own call uh, to the priesthood. Uh, and then at the close of the year of mercy, Pope Francis wrote, Misericordia et Misera, um, uh, about uh, the mercy of God and the misery of man. But prior to Pope Francis, lest anyone be confused as if this is uh, a new thing for the Church, Mercy was very well developed in the pontificate, the very long and fruitful uh, pontificate and legacy of St. John Paul II. And he said, um, and, and this is connected to your question about where did this come from, the devotion came through St. Faustina, the Polish nun that he canonized, but mercy goes back to God. And that's why he says that mercy is an attribute of God. In fact, it's almost the second name of love, uh, and God is love, right? So uh, St. Paul, St. John Paul II said that... Um, the divine mercy of God and the devotion of this Polish nun, uh, St. Faustina, uh, who lived in the 30s and developed or received from the Lord uh, these revelations about his divine mercy uh, between 1931 and 1938, um, he says that it really shaped his, uh, not only his priesthood and his personal spiritual life, but his pontificate. He said, it has formed my pontificate, which began in 1978, two years later. He promulgates the encyclical Rich in Mercy, Divis and Misericordia, in 1980. And then we see that a few years later, uh, 20 years later, he canonizes St. Faustina, and he called it the happiest day of my life. Why? Because he is, he is exalting uh, not just this model, uh, uh, this apostle of mercy, but the whole devotion, the revelation of Jesus Christ that we have through sacred scripture, sacred tradition, and the magisterium, uh, freshly, newly presented to us through these um, revelations that Jesus gave St. Faustina. And so in 2000, he canonizes her and institutes in 2000 the Feast of Divine Mercy, which we're about to celebrate. And then we see uh, that in 2002, he actually consecrated, John Paul II, consecrated the entire world to the divine mercy of God. And last but not least, Bill, isn't this something, you know, in our previous show, we talked about how God puts in these little cues and clues and elements in the whole universe of, of salvation, which point to something else. Look at this beautiful uh, uh, delicacy uh, on the part of God. John Paul II, great Pope of Mercy, died just as the Feast of Mercy was beginning on the eve on Saturday night. Sunday always begins on Saturday night on uh, April 2nd of 2005 on the Feast of Divine Mercy. So he was rewarded for uh, promulgating this devotion. So where does divine mercy begin? It begins in the heart of God. Where is divine mercy uh, exemplified and exercised toward mankind throughout all of salvation history? In the Old Testament, we see it, and then we see it epitomized in the New Testament 
Testament when Jesus comes as mercy incarnate. Where is the new, renewed uh, understanding of this divine mercy um, um, taught us through the divine mercy devotion that St. Faustina of Kowalska received through Jesus Christ, which you find in her diary, the diary of St. Faustina, and in the devotion, which has um, five elements to it, and then I'll add a couple more uh, that we can discuss. Wonderful. Fan- fantastic stuff. So, uh, yeah, we just have a few minutes here before the break, Martha, so just about two or three minutes here. So let's talk about, uh, if, or if you want to tease the, uh, the, you know, the five different keys before the break here, and then we can uh, de- delve into them uh, right afterward. Sure. Uh, I was saying that, that mercy is uh, an, attribute, uh, an attribute of God, and it's uh, even the second name of love. When you love someone, you are willing to go to extremes for them, and God is willing to go to the extreme of uh, an exercise of love, as we see in John 13. He loved those who were his own, and he loved them to the end, to the extreme. He gave his own self as our atonement, in atonement for our sins, as the expiatory um, offering to God, as the Lamb that takes away the sins of the world. And so that we see there in the sacrifice of Christ, that he takes his love to an extreme, and boy, do we need it, because we have commandments to follow, we have a way of life to follow, we are called to live the Beatitudes, or the be attitudes, the attitudes by which we can be like Christ. We can be that image and likeness of God that we were created to be. But when we fall short of the glory of God, and we all fall short of the glory of God, we need the mercy of God to make up for it. Now, justice is also an attribute of God. We owe God our reverence. We owe God our love. We owe God our obedience. We owe God to respond, to correspond to his love and mercy. And when we fall short, sometimes God's justice is revealed to us in his mercy. In other words, when he could strike us, when he could hold us accountable, when he should, in fact, I tell him all the time, Bill, thank God I'm not you. Thank God I'm not God. Because I would strike even myself. I would not be so merciful. But the mercy of God sometimes uh, almost supersedes in a certain sense. You know, in Divis in the Thericordia, the uh, encyclical of John Paul II, Rich in Mercy, he repeats the phrase, in a certain sense, numerous times. In a certain sense, God's justice is superseded by his mercy. Now, I just want to say this before we go to break. Don't be playing around with sin. Don't be playing around with fire. You will get burnt. And if you start enjoying the burning, you might actually die in a fire. You might die eternally. You and I might burn our souls forever and ever if we play around with fire. We have to be careful not to say, oh, God is so merciful, and uh, fall into the sin, the serious grave sin of presumption, which is presuming that God will have mercy on me and not be just, and therefore I can do whatever I want. So there's a beautiful interplay, and uh, Pope John Paul II talked about it as well as Pope Francis. No, it's so beautiful. Uh, There is so much to unpack in uh, the divine mercy, uh, you know, culture and lifestyle that we can live. And I want to talk about that with you as well when we come back from the break, Martha, because... um, you know, when we come, we come back, I want to talk with you about, you know, what are the things we do to participate in Divine Mercy? How do we uh, take an active role in it? Because I think it's such an important thing for young people to know uh, how to do it. And and in addition to that, you know, I, as you said, not to presume uh, that, that you know, I, can, I get to do whatever I want. God will just forgive me for it. Uh, you know, yes, that's, you know, partly true, but it's also, you know, as you said, playing with fire is dangerous. So let's not do that. Um, and... We have to take that short break. When we come back, we'll uh, continue our conversation with Martha Fernandez Sardina. I'm Bill Snyder. Right back after these messages, this is Young Catholics Respond. Patchwork Heart Ministry is committed to sowing hope into broken hearts by helping young people encounter the love of Jesus Christ and His Catholic Church through prayer, storytelling, and media initiatives. We invite you to prayerfully consider supporting this mission financially. 
Mail your tax-deductible donation to Patchwork Heart Ministry at P.O. Box 563, Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, zip code 53147. Or visit patchworkheart.org to donate online. That's Patchwork Heart Ministry, P.O. Box 563, Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, 53147. Or online at patchworkheart.org. Judy Hare was a bankrupt, homeless, drug-addicted college dropout on the brink of divorce, but is now a seminary graduate and devoted wife and mother of four children. What happened? Find out in her autobiography, Shattered, How God Restored My Heart and Life. Her journey of faith has been called brutally honest, truly inspiring, profound, heartbreaking, and life-changing. Shattered is available now for only $15 on her website, judyhair.com, on amazon.com, or at your local Catholic bookstore. As Judy says, it is never too late to become the person you deserve and desire to be. So stop wishing for change and start doing something about it by reserving your copy of Shattered Today. Your heart is always beating, but you never have to think about it. Welcome back to Young Catholics Respond. Once again, Bill Snyder. Welcome back, everybody, to this episode of Young Catholics Respond. I'm Bill Snyder. Today, my guest is Martha Fernandez Sardina, uh, and we are talking about Divine Mercy and Divine Mercy uh, Sunday as it's approaching here uh, quickly. And I, uh, I, I kind of want to open up with the different co core uh, points about Divine Mercy. Right? There's there's uh, four or five different points about Divine Mercy that are really important to understand. Right, Martha? Yes, um, depending on the list that you look at, there's the four main elements, but then, you know, there's a two, three that are uh, very much related to them. So let's get into them, and this is it. This was revealed again uh, by our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, the merciful face of the Father to St. Faustine of Kowalska in Poland in the uh, 1930s. Um, the image, the chaplet, the novena, and the feast, and along with those go the hour, the plenary indulgence, and the sacraments of confession and Eucharist, uh, as well as the works of mercy and the mercy mindset. So let's take a look quickly. Uh, among the, along with the revelations that are found in the diary of St. Faustina, the Lord also asked her to have uh, an image of him as divine mercy uh, commissioned. And though it was not to her liking, because what the beautiful, glorious, extravagant uh, Lord that she was seeing uh, with her own uh, eyes and, and, and heart and mind was not what the painter did, but whatever uh, the beauty of what she saw, we have an image uh, that has been portrayed. And by the way, there's two different images that you see around there. One which was um, promulgated and is one I most became familiar with, and then another one that has been uncovered, and you can look up, there's even a documentary uh, out came out a few years ago about the image, the original image that most resembled what St. Faustina was saying. But in either case, you see that Jesus, the high priest, has uh, rays of uh, light and blood, um, white and red, coming out of his heart, which is a reference to that pierced side of Jesus that we spoke about uh, in the last uh, episode uh, for Holy Week, and from which flow the graces of his mercy and his love through the sacramental life of the Church. Uh, so the Lord promised that those who venerate him in that image um, will receive graces uh, in life and at the hour of death. So that's one of the primary uh, elements that the, that the Divine Mercy um, uh, devotion includes. Then there's also the chaplet of divine mercy. Our Lord asked St. Faustina that we pray at the uh, hour of mercy and at the bedside of those who are sick and dying, and uh, by those and for those who have died, and even for our own souls throughout our life, the divine mercy chaplet. And he revealed to her the prayers, and you can find those online, and it's calling upon the, uh, the Father, calling, uh, asking the Father to forgive our sins and the sins of the whole world in light of the death 
and resurrection of our Lord uh, for the sake of his sorrowful passion, so that his sorrowful, very sorrowful passion and death, crucifixion and death, um, may not go to waste, uh, lavish the world with that mercy that was won by one Jesus Christ, one Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So that is the Divine Mercy Chaplet. And the Lord says that if even once, someone prays that throughout their lifetime, he will have great mercy at the hour of their death, if, uh, especially someone who is uh, dying. So that's something we should be praying even for ourselves. I mentioned the hour of mercy, which is one of the elements, the three o'clock hour. Uh, traditionally, we have, uh, the Church has always believed, and from the eyewitnesses themselves, that the Lord expired, that he gave uh, his spirit into the hands of his Father and breathed his last at three o'clock. And so that has uh, become known as the hour of mercy. Um, and so at that hour, uh, heaven was opened for us through the death uh, of our Lord. And so at that hour, he told uh, St. Faustina to stop and minimally recall his passion and death and uh, the new life he offers us, but whenever possible to pray the Divine Mercy Chaplet and to make the Stations of the Cross. So um, I'm sure that St. Faustina did it, and I know that many, many thousands, millions of people around the world do that at the 3 o'clock hour. Um, And that's a special hour of grace. And then, Bill, uh, I haven't touched on the Novena and the Feast yet quite. Uh, So we're in the Novena, which she asked uh, St. Faustina to begin on Good Friday and to pray for nine days in preparation for the other great um, part of this uh, devotion, which is the Feast of Mercy. So during the Novena, Our Lord revealed to St. Faustina uh, specific groups of people or intentions for each day, and they include uh, people who have no faith, people who do not know Christ but belong to another faith tradition. It includes people who have left the Catholic faith. It includes uh, souls in purgatory. It includes priests and religious and those consecrated to him. It uh, includes uh, the little ones, the the souls of, of, of children and and the vulnerable and so forth. So look that up, and if you haven't started the novena, it's never too late to start a novena. Just jump right in and catch yourself up. And uh, it's a novena that can be prayed also throughout the year. And um, uh, the feast day, Bill, the Feast of Divine Mercy instituted by uh, Pope John Paul II, as we said at the bequest of our Lord through St. Faustina, is that second Sunday Uh, of Easter, in other words, completing the octave. Now, we're not going to talk about it today, but the octave is very, very rich. The eighth day is like the day of the new beginning. Uh, So on the Divine Mercy, we are offered a new beginning, which brings us to the plenary indulgence, which you like so much, Bill. What happens with that plenary indulgence? Well, you know, it's it's the get out of purgatory and hell free card, actually. Uh, It's uh, it's an opportunity— to um, wipe yourself clean of each and every sin and stain of sin that um, th- that is completely um, a part of you on Divine Mercy Sunday, if you if you meet the conditions, you know, set forth by the Church, of course, you you have to have uh, these certain conditions, which are uh, confession, uh, the Eucharist, uh, prayers for the Pope, and then also uh, doing the novena, and uh, from that. You also have to, uh, you know, make sure that you have uh, been unattached to sin, right? So you, so you can't just mm-hmm. be constantly running uh, in, 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 into sinful behavior or sinful situations. And when you're attached, detached from that, um, and you uh, pray with an earnest heart uh, around these days, then what happens is you get that um, total, complete soul washing. It's completely washed clean. Um, by the blood of the Lamb, and then you, should you die um, in that state, you go right to heaven. You don't have to stop in purgatory, um, and you certainly aren't going uh, to hell at that point. So it's a absolutely. Mm-hmm. So it's a beautiful, beautiful um, thing. It's just an incredible uh, gift that's been given to us. Uh, it's it's this um, you know super empowered grace that is given to us when we uh, recite the chaplet, when we do the chaplet. So yeah, uh, that, that novena that, uh, that, that we talked about, um, doing that novena for, for the nine days, it begins on Good Friday. Uh, but as you said, if you missed it or you know whatever, just jump right in and start doing it. 
Um, and, and again, it's confession eight days before the feast or eight days after the feast. Um, and, and you know what, Bill? Actually, 20 days. The, the Church has granted leniency in that regard because sometimes it, it's, it's hard to get to, uh, to a priest uh, in, during confession. So actually, um, it is now um, uh, the new norms allow for within about 20 days before or after. That's beautiful. Um, but I, don't, don't put it off, because you might sometimes, oh, I have a lot of time, and then you might run out of time, so you don't want to miss out on that grace. But you, you said it very well. In general, plenary, indul- plenary indulgences require sacramental confession, Eucharistic communion, uh, preferably on the same day or the days before or after. But being Sunday, we should be receiving communion anyway. Prayer for the intentions of the uh, Pope, the Supreme Pontiff. And the veneration, the best part of the feast, now going back a step there, the feast day, uh, public veneration of the image, and uh, normally when you have these um, uh, celebrations of divine mercy in different parishes and, or dioceses, maybe there's one place in, 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 in a diocese or maybe more than one. A lot of times, I know when I was living in San Antonio, there were three or four or five in, in the Washington, D.C. area as well. There's more than one place to go. Um, there's a recitation together of the Divine Mercy Chaplet and other um, meditations. Um, and of course, we do want to emphasize the one you emphasize, which is important. Detachment from sin, a hatred of sin. You can't have these little secret sins that I kind of like a lot. Okay, I'll confess them, but I really like them. No, if you will not receive a plenary indulgence, meaning the Lord cannot wipe all the temporal punishment due to sin from your soul if you have an attachment, a desire, a love for sin. Now, some of you might be thinking, oh, well, that's a tall order because I'm not a saint yet. Well, yes and no. You're not quite yet. You are, but not yet. Um, we are always in need of reform, of renewal, of repentance, of change, of conversion, of growth, and maturity. Um, but you've been set aside. I've been set aside at baptism, so we are uh, already saints. We've already been sanctified. We just need to continue to be washed clean, as you said so well, Bill. Um, and, and you know what? This, this um, special divine mercy plenary indulgence has been, in the, by some theologians and divine mercy experts, have been. It's been compared to a sort of like a new baptism. Um, so you, the, the state of our soul should be, Bill, uh, as clean as that of a recently baptized baby or adult. Isn't that something? <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. That truly yeah. is amazing, Martha. I, I want to ask you in the last uh, closing minutes of the interview, as these things fly. Uh, right on by, um, just to uh, talk with a little about your ministry and what you're doing and where people can find you. I know that uh, you're always uh, got a couple of different websites out there. Uh, the RememberYourLove.com, which is awesome, and then of course your website MarthaFernandezSardina.com. But just tell us a little bit about uh, what you're doing these days, your ministry, and, and and how people can find you. Yes, people can find me at MarthaFernandezSardina.com and also at RememberYouAreLove.com, which currently will uh, redirect them to my Facebook page. Uh, I'm available for talks, parish missions, parish outreach, love messaging, uh, podcast media, interviews, all kinds of things, and consultation. Um, I am an evangelist at heart through and through. That's where the Lord uses me the most. And to tie it in with the Divine Mercy uh, message of the Gospel, you know that we have the spiritual works of mercy, and we also have the corporal works of mercy. I am um, especially engaged uh, in helping you carry out the spiritual works of mercy to instruct the ignorant, people who are ignorant of the faith of Christ, of the Church, to counsel the doubtful. So many people doubt that they are loved, that they are precious, that that God uh, loves them, uh, to admonish sinners, to bring people back uh, to uh, the state of original holiness that the Lord created uh, or gave us through baptism, to bear patiently with the wrongs of others in this day and age in which we're uh, bickering and fighting, competing. Uh, I help people uh, ah, wade through the waters. And, uh, of course, the other works of mercy as well, to forgive offenses, to comfort the afflicted, to pray for the living and the dead, and to be uh, lovers of all that God is a lover of. So you can find me at MarthaFernandezSardina.com, RememberYouAreLove.com, Facebook, Twitter, and all like and on uh, podcasts and radio shows and TV shows like all of these. So thank you for the opportunity again, Bill, oh. and I hope to be on uh, again. Absolutely. Yeah, we'll have you back for sure. So thanks so much, Martha, for uh, being here. And again, check out the website, MarthaFernandezSardina.com. And uh, thank you so much, Martha, for again, for being here. I'm Bill Snyder. This is Young Catholics Respond. Until next time, keep beating to your Catholic heart. You've been listening to Young Catholics Respond, a radio initiative of Patchwork Heart Ministry. To learn more about our ministry and program, visit us at patchworkheart.org. 
or to get exclusive access and early ministry updates, become our patron on Patreon by searching for Patchwork Heart Ministry.